okay so we just talked about population and random sampling sample mean sample variance standard deviations sample standard deviation sampling we are now currently focusing on sampling from normal distribution and we just talked about student t distribution okay and now we are going to talk about some more distribution today called f distribution and we'll talk little bit about convergence of random variables is a convergence of random variables done in i621 convergence in probability convergence in distribution convergence in expectation nothing of that sort okay let's see how much we can do that today. okay now let's say we have actually two population denoted as normal with mean mu and variance sigma x square another one normal with mean mu i and variance sigma y square these are two different populations from one population i have this samples iid and another population i have this random samples now suppose let's say i am interested in the ratio of their sample variances so what does this capture i want to basically look into the variability of the populations that is uh, how does variance of one population compare with that of the other and since i don't know the variation variance i would replace that by their sample variances and then look at their ratios okay now let's see how to compute the distribution and i will ask you okay find out the distribution of this ratio of the sample variances how to go about it now you want to again appeal to the gaussian distribution properties let's see how to do that this xx square xy square i will divide it by this quantity the actual variances and if i simplify this i will get this quantity and the numerator i am multiplying and dividing by n minus 1 denominator i am multiplying and denom dividing by m minus 1 oh by the way notice that the population this first population i have n samples and the second population i have m samples n and m are not the same now if you focus on the numerator here this we know it to be chi square distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom right that's what we said and the denominator is again a chi square distribution with m minus 1 degrees of freedom and this quantity we are going to call this the distribution of this we are going to call it as f distribution with n minus 1 and m minus 1 degrees of freedom or alternatively the ratio of chi square distribution with n minus degrees of freedom and m minus 1 degrees of freedom we are going to call it as f distribution with n minus 1 and m minus 1 degrees of freedom so we have another distribution here again this distribution is kind of popularized by this uh, ronald fisher who is another famous statistician and the f distribution comes from his first letter f okay so fine what we are basically going through is different statistics we are interested in right sample mean sample variance they themselves are random variables and now we have trying to basically look into what kind of distributions they will have and that has led us to find out this 
t distribution and f distributions and again you can go back and compute the actual PD of this f distribution and you will end up with this PDF function which is PDF with P and Q degrees of freedom and uh, and we are going to denote an F distribution with P and Q degrees of freedom like this okay now the question is uh, how how this PDF comes again you can go back to your classical method of finding the joint distributions from the known distributions okay now if you notice f distribution is nothing but ratio of two chi square distribution right is the numer this chi square distribution in the numerator and the chi square distribution in the denominator are they independent of each other why They are coming from different populations which are assumed to be independent because if the numerator is coming from this population and the denominator is coming from this top they are independent okay so now what I will do is I have now represented this FPQ as nothing but u by p v by q where u is chi square distributed with p degrees of freedom and v is chi square distribution with q degrees of freedom and how appropriately multi divided by p and q so yeah, am i right in saying that f distribution and p and q de degrees of freedom can be written like this if that's the case and you know that u and v are independent then things are easy for us we can again go back and appeal to your computation of joint distribution functions of joint functions of uh, joint distributions okay so now to find out what we will do is again i'm going to define one random variable like this x which is of my interest and i'm going to denote another random variable whatever of my interest i'm going to call it as x and I have denoted another random variable v and our x and y are independent y x and y has to independent because this depends on u v x also depends on v so x and y need not be independent okay but we know that u and v are independent okay and we know that's why joint distribution of u and v is nothing but product of each one of them and we know do we know the CDF of uh, u? u is what? Chi square distribution, right? We know the chi square distribution's PDF, right? So we can write the distribution of joint distribution of u and v. Now that's it. If you know this distribution, now you can find out the joint distribution of x and y, isn't it? Again, what you have to do is use your standard Jacobian method, okay, and then find the marginal of x, and I will again leave it you to complete all these standard steps, okay. That is again nothing you have to do. Try yourself, works out better. Otherwise, just refer to the books that I will post it in which all the details calculations are given but at least try yourself if you are able to reproduce that result okay now see like we have enlarged our scope of many distributions right in just like uh, now going from Bernoulli binomial Poisson Gaussian exponential now we talked about beta distributions gamma distributions then we talked about T distributions and F distributions okay but as you see gamma and beta distributions 
they are somehow related to my basic distributions, right? What was the relation between gamma distribution and exponential distribution? Was there any relation? Okay, gamma distribution was nothing but a summation of n independent exponential distributions with parameter lambda. So, gamma n lambda was like that. And what was the relation between beta distribution and other distributions? Other than that, anything? That's right, beta 1 1 is. Huh? Ratio of gamma distribution is beta. Did you say that? Mm -hmm. Now, this beta distribution is the ratio of the gamma distribution. Can you tell like if I say beta distribution with parameter a and b, now can you express in terms of the gamma distribution? Okay, let us say my x is beta a b. Now, you want to write x as x1 by x2. Huh? x1 plus x1 by x2. Now, what is x1? Gamma, what parameters? What is n? You have to now tell me in terms of a and b, right? What is lambda now? You have to tell me everything now. You are trying to write express beta a b in terms of gamma distribution. Only thing you have is a b. Tell me that. Now, okay, n, what is n? So, gamma has to be n and lambda, right? Okay, so we said gamma is now uh, alpha and lambda, we said. Okay, tell me how is alpha related to a and b? Alpha equals to? Okay. Okay, let us take uh, this is uh, okay x1 alpha equals to a and what was lambda? Yeah, but what is it? Huh? Any lambda, how can it be any lambda? It has to be dependent on a and b, right? I am not sure, you check this. Your claim is if I give you two gamma distributions, you are able to get a beta distribution by writing those gamma distribution in this format. Either if I tell you, okay, let us say, let us say, I will tell you x1 is gamma with parameter, let us say, alpha 1 and lambda 1 and I will say x2 to be gamma alpha 2 lambda 2 and now your claim is x is beta distributed with a b now tell me what is a and what is b okay lambda 1 lambda 2 is equal to what that has to be huh? that is fine and uh, Okay, you want to set lambda 1, lambda to be the same. What about alpha 1 and alpha 2? And lambda 1, lambda 2? No, it you can't be just greater. Greater than 0 means which be? Like I can take 10, 20, 30, 40. Like you said, A equals to alpha 1, you fixed it. 
I can't take anything now. When you say b equals to this, you fixed it. Now fix me lambda 1 and lambda 2. b equals to alpha 1 plus alpha 2, okay. Lambda? Can't be. Then let, let's say I take a lambda 1 equals to lambda 2 equals to 10. Then this will give me some value. And if I take lambda 1 equals to lambda 2 equals to 20, it can't be same, right? It will give me something else. Okay, you just throw up or you know what? You have, huh? Then tell me. Then what's its value? Any constant will do? Okay, I don't know about any constant. Okay, then it's an exercise for all of you. Okay, if you don't get, you catch these two people who are making this claim. Okay, their claim is if you take two distributions comma 1 and comma 2 with parameters alpha 1, lambda 1, alpha 2, lambda 2 where alpha 1 is same as alpha 2 and any value, then you will get a beta distribution when you express like this, x is like a beta distribution where a equals to alpha 1, b equals to alpha 1 plus alpha 2, that is their claim. Okay, so I may ask you to prove or disprove this. So verify this. Okay, now let's see some simple properties of this f distribution. Suppose you have x to be given to be f distribution with degrees of freedom p and q. And you may be interested in taking the reciprocal of that 1 by x. Then my claim is it will have a f distribution with degrees of freedom q and p. So p and q has become q and p now. Why is that? That, uh, that observation is obvious, right? Because let us say you know that x can be written as u by p v by q, this should have been q, where u is chi square distribution with p degrees of freedom and u is chi square distribution with q degrees of freedom. Now what is 1 by q, x in this case? 1 by x case now just uh, ulta, right? Now the numerator is chi square distribution with q degrees of freedom and the denominator is chi square distribution with p degrees of freedom. Then by definition this should be fqp. Okay, just again verify. Okay, now suppose what is the connection between student t distribution and f distribution? Okay, now suppose x is student t distribution with p degrees of freedom, then it so happens that the square of that is f distribution with dig 1 and with parameters 1 and p. So why is that? Again you can verify this pretty straightforward. Let us take x to be student t distribution and if it is a student t distribution I know that that could be represented as a ratio of two random variables u and v. right actually u and square root of v by p where u is normally distributed and v is chi square distribution with p degrees of freedom that we have discussed and we also said they are independent this u and v are independent. Now if you just take the square of this you just take the square now this is u square divided by v by p. Now we have already discussed that if u is normal then what is the distribution of u square? Chi 
chi square with what degrees of freedom? One degree of freedom, right? That's what we have discussed some time back. This is going to be one degrees of freedom. Now what I have done? Now if you carefully look into this, now I have this like chi square numerator I can divide it by 1 nothing changes and the denominator is now this v is chi square distribution with p degrees of freedom right now notice that now i am able to write this as ratio of two chi square distribution where the numerator is of 1 degrees of freedom and denominator is of p degrees of freedom and appropriately normalized and by definition what is this f 1 p because the numerator has 1 degrees of freedom denominator has p degrees of freedom so you people are talking about this third example okay let's look into that suppose let's say x is f distribution with parameters p and q If I write like this, x divided by 1 by x, but x is being multiplied by 1 plus qx. Okay, so what is this actually? Can I write it in this form? Okay, fine. Let's let's take it in this form. And now I, we are saying that this is nothing but beta distribution with parameters p by two and q by two. Okay, now let's try to solve your problem. Can we use this result? Suppose this is true. You are talking about this x, right? X is Okay, you want to say x is what? Okay, this is my right, this is the FPQ. Q, right. Now, how is this? I have to ratio take like this, how this becomes beta? And this is not even look, gamma, I, I do not see gamma coming. Gamma is not directly related to FPQ. So, chi square is related to gamma, that is right. Yeah, now try to fill in the gap like how now can you prove this using this? Okay, so here this is my A and this is B. According to you, it's not clear what you are saying. It does not come. Okay, anyway, you this requires some computation. This is not see so the claim one and two are straightforward. We can just uh, apply the definition, but uh, this requires little more thinking. Okay, how to derive this? relation between f distributions and beta distribution so work out this as an exercise okay fine so and then try to see that if you can connect with this result if uh, and what if it is indeed correct okay let's stop here today